An orogenic gold deposit is a type of hydrothermal mineral deposit. More than 75% of the gold recovered by humans through history belongs to the class of orogenic gold deposits. Rock structure is the primary control of orogenic gold mineralization at all scales, as it controls both the transport and deposition processes of the mineralized fluids, creating structural pathways of high permeability and focusing deposition. Orogenic gold deposits are hosted by shear zones in orogenic belts, specifically in metamorphosed fore arc and back arc regions and were formed during sin to late metamorphic stages of orogeny. Formation of orogenic gold deposits is related to structural evolution and structural geometry of lithospheric crust as hydrothermal fluids migrate through pre-existing and active discontinuities. Faults shear zones lithological boundaries generated by tectonic processes. These discontinuities provide pathways and channel fluid flow, not only of ore-bearing fluids, but also of fluids transporting metallic elements, such as silver, arsenic, mercury, and antimony, and gases, as well as melts. Gold-bearing fluids precipitate at an upper crustal level between 3 and 15 kilometers depth, possibly up to 20 kilometers depth forming vertically extensive quartz veins, typically below the transition of green schist to amphibite metamorphic facies. Waldemar Lindgren made the first widely accepted classification of gold deposits and introduced the term mesothermal for mostly gold, only deposits in metamorphic terrains and greenstone belts. The term mesothermal refers to temperatures between 175 to 300 Celsius and a formation depth of 1.2 to 3.6 kilometers. In 1993, the term orogenic gold deposits was introduced as gold deposits of this type have a similar origin and gold mineralization is structurally controlled. Amalgamation of disrupted continental masses to form new supercontinents known as Wilson cycles play a key role in the formation of deposits by initiating major regional change of the geochemical, mineralogical, and structural nature of the lithosphere. Orogenic gold deposits were only formed in certain time slices of the Earth's history. Orogenic gold deposits are mainly concentrated in three epochs of Earth history. The time, bound nature of many mineral deposits reflects the breakup or formation of supercontinents, which most likely also applies for orogenic gold deposit. In magmatic systems, ores and host rocks are derived from the same fluid. In the case of hydrothermal fluids, host rocks are older than the predominantly aqueous fluids that carry and deposit metals and thus complicate defining a host rock associated with gold fluid formation. A number of rock types have been suggested as the source of orogenic gold, but due to the variability of host rocks in Earth's history and deposit, scale, their relation to Earth's kale gold formation processes is unclear. Furthermore, age dating of the deposits and their host rocks shows that there are large time gaps in their formation. Age dating indicates that mineralization took place 10 to 100 May after the formation of the host rock. These temporal gaps suggest an overall genetic independence of the fluid formation and that of local lithologies. Geochemical studies on quartz veins are important to determine temperature, pressure, at which the veins were generated, and the chemical signature of fluids. Obviously, quartz is the dominant mineral in the vein. Or bodies of orogenic gold deposits are generally defined by less than 3 to 5 percent sulfide minerals. The tendency of gold to be preferentially transported as a sulfide complex also explained the near absence of base metals, copper, lead, zinc, in the same mineral systems because these metals form complexes with chlor rather than sulfur. In general, hydrothermal fluids are characterized by low salinities up to 12 weight percent sodium chloride equivalent, high H2O and CO, two contents greater than 4 mole percent, with lesser amounts of spore and new 2 and near neutral fate.
High salinity fluids can result from dehydration of evaporite sequences containing high NA and keel concentrations and above mentioned base metal complexes, although some authors suggest a specific range of CO2 of about 5 to 20 percent. There is a wide variety from almost pure to, to almost pure H2O, whereby CO, two rich fluids may indicate high fluid production temperatures, 500 decorogenic gold deposits formed in metamorphosed terrains of all ages that have little in common except for being sites of complexity and low mean stress. For this reason, a discussion of the gold deposit formation in a universal genetic model is most difficult and several models have been considered. The fundamental control of the chemical signature of orogenic gold fluids can most likely be found in the processes that take place in the source region. Therefore, the discussion about genetic models of orogenic gold deposits concentrates on the possible source of gold-bearing fluids, a magmatic hydrothermal source from which felsic intermediate magmas release fluids as they crystallize, Tompkins 2013. Fluids that exhaled from a granitic melt intrude into the upper or middle crust and are enriched in many elements, such as SICUMO, SBB, MOS, BVUAWSINAU. But a main constraint is that in many gold provinces, gold mineralization and granitic intrusion, which indicate magmatic activity, show no age relationship. In addition, the composition of granites are extremely variable and show no consistent temporal pattern through geological time. Even if some deposits clearly indicate a magmatic source, it must be considered that only due to overprinting mineralization with higher gold grades from other sources, these deposits became economic. A hybrid deposit with a combination of a magmatic and a metamorphic mid or subcrustal source is a much more common scenario. A model that fits most of the gold provinces and provides some of the major gold resources entails a metamorphic fluid source. In this style of gold deposit, gold and other elements have been released into metamorphic fluids from material accreted to a craton during subduction-related scenarios. Most likely, fluids have been produced under prograde green schist to amphibolite. Basis metamorphism, 220 to 450 Celsius and 1 to 5 kilobar. The generally low salinity of the hydrothermal fluids can be attributed to devalatilization of minerals associated with metamorphic phase reactions involving dehydration and decarbonation. Composition of produced fluids vary depending on the pressure and temperature conditions in rock chemistry and may be influenced by fluid rock, rock interactions along the pathway. Coupling between fluid flow and structural deformation plays a key role for mineralization. Gold formation occurs typically in the late phase of an orogeny during changes in far field stresses. Created and reactivated rapturing faults serve as pathways for hydrothermal solutions. These gold and silica fluids migrated through fractures over long distances and were deposited in deformation structures at the brittle ductile transition and near the base of the seismogenic zone. Gold deposits in this model are characterized by elevated S and AS and only minor enrichments of other elements. The model of a subcrustal source is similar to the middle crustal model. In both cases, fluids and metals form from volcanic and sedimentary products and tectonic processes, but also show differences in the origin of the source and the processes involved. This model is associated with fluid ascent from devilatilization of a subducting slab and overlying sediment wedge. Oceanic mantle, crust, and overlying sediments were subducted and rapidly heated and had OC rich vapors released fluids during heating at temperatures below 650 degrees Celsius and depths of 100 kilometers. Serpentinization, slab mantle hydration, may play an important role for two reasons. First, recent fluid,
flow experiments confirm that serpentinite acts as a lubricant for the overlying subcontinental lithospheric mantle, SCLUM, and therefore plays a major role in dynamic setting. Secondly, serpentinization involves volume increase as large as 40 that enhances fracturing in peridotites and provides permeability for hydrothermal fluids. Serpentinite formed by hydrated oceanic mantle carries up to 13 weight percent water to the deep mantle. Slab dewatering may start at depths less than 100 km and over. Pressured fluids migrate into fault zones in the upper lithosphere and eventually form gold deposits. However, fluid migration along faults might not be effective in a compressional stress field, thereby increasing the possibility that neutral stress planes control a vertical fluid supply in the fault zones. Under this assumption, the trigger to cause fluid release might be the end of subduction or a stalling of the slab during subduction, resulting in a delayed fluid migration and gold mineralization process. The subcrustal fluid source model is more robust as it describes both a source and a mechanism, but also has limitations as many Precambrian gold deposits do not have thick sedimentary succession. Although efforts have been made to define a specific deformation structure associated with the formation of orogenic gold deposits, no specific structure could be identified. Rather, there are various types of faults hosting gold deposits. Nevertheless, orogenic gold deposits have a number of repetitive structural geometries that control or fluid formation, transport, and precipitation. Large-scale lithospheric deformation structures correlate with gold endowment and active structural permeability in the crust is controlled by the prevailing tectonic stress field. There is an increasing body of evidence that the formation of orogenic gold deposits is tied to specific geodynamic settings, primary orogenic belts, a variety of gold deposits are formed in accretionary origins, including orogenic gold deposits. Orogenic gold deposits are typically located in metamorphosed forearc and back arc regions, as well as in the arc, and show a close spatial relationship to lamprophires and associated felsic porphyry dikes and silt. Lamprophire dikes are not the source of the ore fluid itself, but indicate a deep lithospheric connection for fluid conduits. Orogenic gold deposits show a spatial relationship to structural discontinuities, including faults, fractures, dilatation zones, and shear zones. The ore hosting structures are subsidiary faults or shear zones, mostly D3 to 4 and a DUN2 to 4 structural sequence, which are always related to a major regional scale deformation structures such as lithospheric boundaries and suture zones. The deformation structures hosting the gold deposits are typically discordant with respect to the stratigraphic layering of the host rocks. The mineralized structures indicate sin to post-mineralization displacements, such as slicken sides formed under hydrothermal conditions. The geometry of vein systems is primarily influenced by a combination of dynamic stress changes and fluid pressure variations. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest, leave a comment.